tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. Well, so I'm Marion Bailey and at the moment I'm working in Hambad. I'm playing character Q, who is the older queen. There are two queens in the play, um, a younger and an older. And the older queen is looking back on her younger self um, and the meetings she had over an 11-year period every week with Margaret Thatcher. And um, of course, nobody really knows what went on <laughs> behind closed doors. They kept no notes. So it's a work of the imagination, but uh, we know some things. Some things have sort of crept out, and there are rumours from palace footmen, and famously, of course, uh, the Queen's press secretary got into trouble way back in time when uh, the Sunday Times was um, plastered with stories about the Queen, shall we say, slightly disapproving of some of Margaret Thatcher's policies, but um, both the palace and Margaret Thatcher denied it. So it's just a fun remembering of the possibilities of those two meetings and of course two very powerful women um, and what that relationship was about is, is quite good fun. So yeah, that's the current, the current gig. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and what's your favourite part of what you do? Um, well, I like playing different characters. So, of course, playing the Queen is just a wonderful character to get inside. We have wonderful wigs to help us. Um, but yes, I think, for me, the favourite thing is getting inside a character and perhaps me marrying not being recognisable afterwards. I love going into a bar after the show and nobody knowing who I was. <laughs> That's quite good, yeah. yeah. Um, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, not to worry so much about what other people think and to be a little bit more self-confident really, to have a bit more faith in myself. And that might be a generational thing. I, my daughter's 25, nearly 26, and I look at her and her friends and, and they're just kind of a lot more confident and uh, I think I, I was probably brought up to think that you had to sort of not push yourself forward. And so I, I'd just say, without showing off, and being gross about it, but just have confidence in who you are and don't worry about anyone else's opinions, really. But listen to good advice, um, but not, yeah, yeah. When was the first moment you fell in love with theatre? Well, someone asked me this this morning, actually. I, I don't exactly know, but it might have been. I remember at my infant school, um, and I was born in the 1950s, this is going back quite a long way, um, we had a troop of actors coming and I can't remember what they did and they were all wearing black leotards and tights <laughs> um, but I was abs I just remember it so vividly and thinking it was all very beautiful uh, and this morning I was remembering I had a, a big sister who um, was in an amateur pantomime she played Dandini in Cinderella and I just remember looking at her in this gorgeous costume and thinking oh, that's nice and I used to watch on the afternoons Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movies on the television I think yeah, that showbiz looks quite good to me. And then I discovered as time went on, I was painfully shy. I discovered it was something I was actually quite good at. And I could sort of belt out a song, even though I couldn't speak to people because I was so shy. So, yeah. yeah. And finally, if your life were a musical, yeah. what would the grand finale be? Well, I hope it would be a grand finale lifting me up to heaven <laughs> with a sort of heavenly choir, as long as heaven was a cool place to be, um, with a lot of fun and eating and drinking and being merry. Um, yeah, I suppose it would be some sort of happy ending. <laughs> or maybe just, you know, an eternal life. Oh, in the most beautiful part of the world, by the sea somewhere, you know, but uh, yes, it would be a big song dance number anyway. Mm -hmm. A happy, a happy one. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs>